Hi everybody, this is Gad Saad for The Sad Truth. Since we are currently in the holiday season, I thought that I would take a few minutes to discuss gift giving from an evolutionary perspective, since obviously gift giving is such an integral part of the holiday uh, rituals. Um, in my trade book, The Consuming Instinct, the subtitle of my book is What Juicy Burgers, Ferraris, Pornography, and Gift Giving Reveal About Human Nature. And so you might think, well, what what does gift giving reveal about human nature? And the answer is actually a multifaceted one. So gift giving manifests itself uh, as a as part of the courtship ritual, right? So when we give uh, gifts, when we are uh, wooing our prospective partners, that's certainly something that could be studied from an evolutionary perspective, something that I have studied from an evolutionary perspective. Uh, but for today, what I'd like to talk about are two studies one which I conducted uh, back in 2003 uh, with one of my former doctoral students, Tripat Gill, where we looked at gift giving from a evolutionary perspective. I won't get into all of the details, but I'll focus on one particular finding from that study. And then I'll also talk about a study that is currently under review that I'm doing with the three Israeli colleagues. So let me begin first with the uh, study from 10 plus years ago with Tripat Gill. And so in that study, we asked people to uh, tell us how they would allocate uh, their gift giving budget. So for example, if they had a thousand dollars, how would they allocate uh, that money to various gift recipients? How much money would you give to your brothers, sisters, your parents, uh, your partner, uh, your closest friends, your more distant uh, kin? And what we found is uh, among several interesting findings is that there was a positive correlation between the size of the gift and the genetic relatedness between uh, the gift giver and the gift recipient, meaning that people are very good at modulating their investments as a function of how genetically tied they are to the prospective uh, gift recipients. Now, they don't necessarily do this consciously, but they know that on average, they're likely to spend more money on a first cousin than they are on a second cousin, if only because the former is genetically closer to them than the latter. So that was uh, one finding from that uh, paper. More recently, uh, with uh, several Israeli uh, colleagues, the lead author on that paper is Sigal Tiferet, uh, an Israeli friend and colleague of mine. Uh, we also studied gift giving, but in a different context and using, rather than hypothetical uh, scenarios as the data, we actually had real life data from weddings. And so specifically we had data from 30 Israeli weddings where people kept a list, the bride and groom kept a list of the various uh, guests that attended the wedding and how much of a gift they gave. Uh, uh, usually in Israeli weddings you, you'll give a monetary gift, $150, $200, whatever it may be. And so they actually had these lists drawn up, you know, uh, uncle so-and-so gave $150, cousin uh, Mordechai gave $100 and so on. And so what we wanted to do was test two hypotheses. One uh, was to test the, the same hypothesis as the earlier study, namely uh, whether there's a positive correlation between uh, the size of the monetary gift and genetic relatedness. And here we demonstrated exactly that finding again, but using, in this case, data from another culture and using real world data, actual field data, rather than uh, data from hypothetical scenarios. But the second hypothesis is really the one that is quite uh, surprising uh, if you're not well versed in evolutionary theory, mo most people could probably say, well, yeah, you know, it makes intuitive sense that people would give larger gifts to their brother than they would to their second cousin. Uh, and I may be able to predict that even if I don't understand evolutionary theory. But the next hypothesis that I'm going to discuss with you would actually be quite difficult to uh, posit were you not well versed in evolutionary theory. So if you take, for example, your four grandparents, they are all on average, uh, equally genetically related to you. So there's something called the uh, genetic relatedness coefficient, R, uh, which basically captures how much on average does somebody share uh, same genes as you. So 
with your brother on average you share 50 percent of your genes with your parents it's 50 percent of your genes with your grandparents it's 25 percent of your genes so if you look at your four grandparents they all have a r coefficient of 0.25 with you meaning that they are equally genetically related to you if you only use that metric but if you then realize that it's not only genetic relatedness that matters, but also genetic assuredness, how assured are you of that genetic link? Well, then your maternal grandmother is absolutely assured of her genetic link. There is no such thing as maternal uncertainty. But your paternal grandfather has two generations of paternity uncertainty. And so your maternal grandmother is assured of her link. Your paternal grandfather is the least assured of his link. And so there have been studies that have shown that the patterns of investment of grandparents fit exactly that uh, theoretical prediction. Namely, your maternal grandmother invests the most in, in, in the grandchildren, the paternal grandfather invests the least, and the two other grandparents are between those two endpoints. And so we wanted to test exactly this idea, namely whether the maternal versus paternal side of the bride and groom uh, would give larger gifts. And if we go by that genetic assuredness uh, hypothesis, then we would expect that the maternal side of the bride and groom would give larger gifts than the paternal side. And that's exactly what we found. Now that hypothesis would have been very, very difficult to predict where you're not coming from an evolutionary perspective. So this demonstrates uh, the power of an evolutionary lens in generating research questions that otherwise would have been difficult, if not impossible, to, to identify. So on that note, uh, I wish you all a very, very happy holiday season. Uh, I hope that the new year brings you nothing but uh, health and happiness. Uh, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Tell your friend about it. Happy New Year, and I'll talk to you soon. Ciao.